I'm going to present you uh, portative sensors for measuring soil electrical parameters in situ. This presentation is a joint effort of myself at Landweiser, uh, Yuri Meinstein uh, of CyberGeo, uh, Dmitry Romanov, um, Terrazond, and uh, my brother Lev Poznikov, uh, he's uh, working at Moscow State University and managing uh, Landweiser um, Russian branch. Uh, quick overview of today's talk is um, I want to stress out that despite widely um, available um, satellite and UAV imagery platform nowadays and um, GIS analytics, Still, the detailed information about topsoil and near surface layers is very difficult to obtain without um, intensive soil sampling and uh, laboratory analysis, which are expensive and very time consuming. We have um, explosion of new sensors, new devices, uh, data storage, computer capability, but still the, the fundamental properties of soil are very difficult to obtain um, in situ. Uh, also well known that um, soil electrical properties, uh, electrical resistivity, conductivity and self potentials are really fundamental soil properties and directly related with salinity, texture, water and stone content and other properties which are affected by density of uh, mobile electrical charges. Unlike other soil properties, electrical parameters can be easily repeatedly and reliably measured in city in, in laboratory with different uh, geophysical instruments. And those parameters are really universal soil characteristic and very useful for mapping and monitoring. Um, this review is, uh, like I said, provided a very joint effort of uh, many partner companies um, and featured methods of um, direct current resistivity, conductivity, or um, induced polarization. Those are, can be measured by um, LandMapper, which is um, in, uh, designed by me and sold by LandVisor in USA, and um, electrical tomography measured uh, by Cyber um, ER, uh, by, uh, by a Cyber Geo in Estonia, uh, electromagnetic induction instruments, uh, uh, Geovisor and IEMP14 by KB Electrometry Russia and also um, 3D GPR, um, a very efficient instrument by Terrazond. Um, the Geovisor um, IEM14 and um, GPR, uh, also Cyber, originally was originated from the uh, Siberian branch of Russian Academy of Science in Novosibirsk. Um, and um, we've been partners since I think 2008 with them and uh, kind of this whole work is made possible and over the last 20 years we've been continuing improving the instrument. Um, so today we'll be briefly touching about application theory and also showing like um, preview of new development where we in integrating the devices with RTK GPS, uh, mobile uh, UFV platforms and also connected sensor network, LoRa network and presenting unifying three-step approach to in-depth site characterization utilizing uh, combining all this information is in geographical information system including imagery and uh, electrical geophysical m m properties. Um, the brief history how LandVisor started. Um, the, the work uh, measuring electrical uh, resistivity, conductivity of soil started by my father, Anatoly Poznikov, way back in Russia, probably at the same time I was born. And uh, I the whole family kind of following the footsteps of my dad and my uh, first PhD thesis was about applying electrical geophysical method for mapping um, and monitoring of alluvial soils which um, I defended in 1995 at Moscow State University in Russia. In 1990, 
seven, I moved to US and um, I was entered another PhD program at the University of Wyoming and kind of um, summarize um, the previous work by my father and, and others and did some more research and the thesis is available in, in English. Uh, it kind of um, overview, although it's almost more than 20 years old now, but its fundamental properties are still valid. Uh, electrical properties of soil. And in 2002, uh, while I moved to New Jersey and was a postdoc at Rutgers University, I started the company um, as an vision to be it, uh, like a land advisor, sort of um, blend with um, GIS analytics, which are back then were like just starting and um, designing the very simple use tool of measuring electrical conductivity to kind of um, help in soil characterization. And the first device was uh, brought to the market, uh, which just measured just resistivity and uh, was a uh, land mapper uh, first model in 2003. Um, briefly, why do we really need to measure soil EC? Um, we have imagery, we have drones, we have satellites, um, we have so much data now. Why do we really need um, uh, focus on geophysical imaging and especially in agriculture and environmental. Well, first of all, there's a certain key points about imagery. Imagery provides complete coverage. Satellite imagery is inexpensive. They are already collecting imagery, but they don't, they only can see what's on the ground. They're great for vegetation mapping. They're very fast, but they don't see through the soil. Even this some applications were with thermal um, imagery. They still, they, they literally barely scratching the surface. We also have a, a lot of sensors now, which are provide point measurements. You can bury them in multiple depths and they provide time series of different soil properties, be it uh, again, conductivity or moisture content or something else. But they are not complete coverage and you cannot really put them every meter or so if you need more information. So here comes geophysical imaging. It could be used both for mapping and monitoring. Um, you can, from the very dense measurements, you can do it with land mapper or cyber or other instruments. You can build 2D or 3D subsurface models. There is contact and non-contact methods uh, like classical for electrode probe DC method and electromagnetic induction method. Those can be, this instrument usually used on the ground. You can either work with them, right? Some vehicle, or now we can, there's some attempts in this our group also to fly with them, to put them on a drone, which I'll tell you later. Um, so like I said, now sensors and instruments measuring some properties are very plentiful and they provide a lot of data. But I always want to stress out, so data is not a knowledge. Uh, so to derive the useful knowledge actionable from data, we, we need that, we need the data, but which data are the best for which application? And we ultimately need the knowledge because knowledge is power. Now we can see that we can graph, um, and this is not really, um, it's a great idea, I stole it from a slant range um, company of drone company because, well, satellites imagery are available, but not sometimes not in the same time when you need it. So actionability could be very low. It's like ad hoc analysis. Man aircraft still expensive. You have to hire, you have to, people have to fly them. Drones have became increasingly available, getting cheaper, a lot of cameras integration. So most, many people can fly them and use in research. Um, and then they're actually actionable data. Ground sensors are also very actionable, but like I said, you install them and you monitor and even uh, get like pings about if there is a need to irrigate and there's plenty of companies who are doing just like that work. And of course, we still need human scouts, agronomists who go take samples, view what's happening with the crop, what's happening in, in ecosystems. So actionability is, you know, very 
person is right there, but um, there's limit to human res- human resources, people, uh, time. It's very hard to work to be scouting fields. So we need technology. Now, if we compare satellite versus drone imagery, UAV imagery. UAV provide much higher resolution than satellite, of course, because they're closer to the ground. UAV sort of an affected by cloud cover, but you cannot really fly when it's raining or other like high winds. So there is also drawback to it. They provide very high resolution pictures. You can um, use multispectral, hyperspectral um, sensors to d- really see what happening with the, in this case with citrus plants and detect which trees are have some diseases and so those imagery is great for plants but they not really tell you anything about soils unless there's a problem like here in soil drainage you can see it on the map already this is cranberry field from back in 1999 there was main aircraft imagery and i was working at Rutgers at cranberry blueberry um, research station we did first like um, EC mapping, electrical, in this case, it was like uh, colors are um, yields and the um, ISO lines are resistivity, which were corresponding very well. Um, higher resistivity was showing high yield because it was drier and better drained. Um, and then you see almost no yield where it was waterlogging because there was a disease of Phytophthora root rot. So in this case, you kind of um, imagery tell you the same story what like EC map or resistivity map telling. So sometimes the problem was already visible, but maybe it's too late that time. Um, here you see the salinity. Salinity is very um, variable mobile salt property because the salt move with evapotranspiration, with rain, with irrigation, with relief. And um, in many cases, you don't see the soil salinity right there, right? But you see that plants are still dying. So young rice seedling in this case were planted and died. And there was, if the farmer took the measurements of VC, for example, before and did some flushing before he planted, maybe that would be the, the helpful information. But to get the soil mapping of the field, nowadays what happens, they collect a few samples, send it to the lab, there is like almost two weeks delay usually. So it was very inconvenient and still in most cases not. So we see that um, soil sensors which measure conductivity or resistivity is very um useful tools and there's many newly developed technologies they can obtain very fast very dense and accurate gps um, um stamped um, s- measurements of soil you see in in the field and since soil you see is related to many soil properties which are important in plant growth we can outline outline management zone we can direct more we can sample much less to get the same or even better information about. So, and unlike the imagery, um, the sensors which measure electrical conductivity or resistivity, such as land mapper, they can um, measure the conductivity in a range of depths directly from the soil surface. And that's what's not imagery and satellite will ever be able to achieve. So we can say that on the go soil sensors uh, will provide non-destruct information quickly, non-destructively and accurately. So we can use them to monitor um, the changes in cultivated soils and um, get a lot of material for statistical um, analysis. And then we can install on specific management zone, you can install different like stationary samples. They and also, a lot of those samples, like here, soil, EC, and temperature probe, they also measure electrical conductivity. The sap flow is measuring some difference in electrical conductivity. And those sensors are great, and the, the Woodpecker Microsystem is actually um, the company we partner with um, there in Houston. They develop very low-cost 
connected network of all sen uh, sensors. They set up LoRa network and then uh, feed this informa information um, into their dashboards and actionable information is right there, they say, at farmer's uh, fingertips. We're now working with them to um, sort of co in collaboration to do um, GIS dashboarding and maybe combine land mapper with them. We also know there's a um, uh, classical four electrode um, big um, rigs measuring electrical conductivity in like one or two depths on the topsoil and rigged by USD Salinity Lab and various technology was, you know, improving that uh, technique and being uh, used on many, many acres around the world. Um, now, in our case, there are also EM instrument like EM14, uh, ele um, electromagnetic induction instrument, um, which uh, measure uh, EC with a, at a range of depths because of different frequency. In this case, there's 14 frequencies and 14 depths. It's relatively heavy, but you don't have to ground any electrodes. You can walk anywhere and take very detailed um, profiles or maps of your field. Um, now, Landvisor like started as really as an advisor. Although we partner with many many companies who provide high quality instrument to um, uh, map and monitor environmental resources, soils or plants or groundwater, but we also figured out that users now are overwhelmed with technologies. There are so many of those sensors and. Uh, it's sometimes for the end user is it very difficult to make sense what is useful, what is can be applied, what information can be obtained with this particular sensor, with this particular instrument. So if you visit our site now, landvisor.com, um, and scrolling a little bit down there, you can quickly fill the form and ask us um, which kind of instrument we can ad advise you what kind of approach and we made it pretty simple three-step approach to land surveying and monitoring and what Landvisor as a service company as a consulting company will do for any client big or small big farmers small farmer county um, um, ecolog ecological survey or you know ask us for some help so first we do and we build a, a web mapping dashboard for the for the area of the interest of the client. And l last year, Landvisor became a uh, bronze um, ESRI partner network. We joined the network and we uh, use um, ESRI platform, um, ArcGIS platform to combine all those resources. We will gather all available soil maps, land use maps, satellite imagery. Um, some climate variables as well, um, and then the the rest of this talk I'll just show how just just with land mapper if they if they desire they can stop right there. We just provide the geographical information already available. If they want a more detailed measurement of soil electrical properties, there is an approach to use just land mapper and how to and that's what I'll tell later in this talk. But then also what behind um uh, beyond the three steps we can also landvisor can provide the live tracking of weather uh, and uh, some public risk um anything ge ge geography related and available from the public sources or if we install this in partnership with um with a microsystem we can also building this dashboard the time series of this uh, of the soil sensors and we can also we partner with um, air data um, it's a drone imagery company and Cilio, which is a drone spraying company so those companies we can connect you with them and um, they provide very good information but they also help um, our we partner with them so they they collect the information we making sense out of it so to speak and then um the sevens if there's like some 
deep um, geophysical survey requested to monitor contamination plumes, uh, dam stability, um, uh, assessment for sinkholes, quicksand, all kind of more deeper geological surveying. Then we have instruments uh, for sail and for rental or cyber. Uh, we can um, IM14, uh, the TerraZond. Um, those are Yuri Marstein is presenting now uh, today with me as well. So you can ask him questions directly. So those are steps one and two building custom, custom dashboard. Um, again, it's based on ESRI ArcGIS Online and very simple. This was example of some county in Florida. We were doing uh, proof of concept for this approach. Uh, this is, um, those interactive maps are available on our sort of disaster ma mapping portal. There's like an um, interactive COVID map now. There's storm and flooding watch map and we have watching, then you could see it live but now we don't have it it's just you know heavy rain um the, the step number three when we select the area of interest um we can um just utilizing just our device land mapper we can because it's fast and in portable and very versatile you can do mapping like shows here if you have a dig soil pit you can measure in a small volume directly on the soil pit and the, uh, correlate with the surface or to see the uh, sort of uh, layers in the ground you can just spread the electrode as wide as you can and it, it measures deeper and deeper this is well known like vertical electrical landing technique and it also can be done with land mapper manually uh, down to 20 meters um, is possible to measure so land mapper is very portable and scalable. You can measure in the samples, you can measure in irrigation water, electrical conductivity, in soil sample paste, in the field soil from like very small two centimeters to approximately 20 centimeters. It's, it's portable and fits in a short pocket, works all season in the built-in nine volt battery. And those probes are easy built from PVC pipe and just common wires and stainless steel nails. And it's very easy and fast because we don't need really no calibration, but you have to just calculate the coefficient for every probe size. The bigger the probe, the deeper you can measure. And then you just stick it in the soil, stick the probe in the soil, push the button, and get the C or resistivity value in like four seconds. It stores about thousand um, measurements and now in new in our models, um, um, URM three and four, um, it's also real time stamps. So if you're collecting your GPS concurrently, you can merge the data afterwards and make a map. Also the time stamp now you can, user can program every, to measure like say conductivity or resistivity every minute, every five minutes, once a day, it's user, can set it up and leave the land mapper measuring and then get the date to analyze like time series. Um, so now, and now it's um, just USB cable to download data to computer and uh, work with it for that. This is a case of this um, like approach to use land mapper to get detailed maps of soil physical properties. This an example was on, on their farm supplying potatoes to McDonald's and this very intensive um, irrigated farm, about 400 acres field. Uh, in, in red here, this is the area. In red, there is like um, 10 soil pits were dug or like samples were collected on multiple depth. And um, on the map above, there is um, 90 um, vertical electrical zone locations where we had the um, vertical electrical resistivity profiles and about 400, so once per acre, uh, multi depth uh, mapping uh, was also done. So that was very intensive uh, research. It was like a couple of PhD um, dissertation based on this uh, measurement back in Russia. So what was done here, you see the, um, the maps of electrical resistivity 
which was um, built from vertical electrical zoning measurements at 90 location plus electrical profiling data. So the, the left corner is 10 centimeter resistivity, then 30 centimeter, um, uh, 60 centimeter, which is two feet, and this is um, almost five meters uh, or 16 feet depth. So we see they kind of resemble each other, but very um, different. And then the samples were collected and measured in, labor in laboratory exactly with the land mapper to correlate with in city measurement. Um, and there was it was highly correlated values. Then those samples were measured for clay content, for coefficient for filtration coefficient, for water content, and the field capacity. And the, the relationship between resistivity and those properties is exponential, which is because those properties are influencing um, density of mobile electrical charges. And by the Bolt Boltzmann law, this is you know very known relationship. It's been published over and over again, multiple studies, multiple soil properties, but they all um, relate to the resistivity or conductivity on ex exponentially. And then from those relationship, uh, like back calculation and calibration, we could really present here just at the deepest depth, uh, those uh, key physical properties at 16 feet. Um, not so complex approach of doing um, many hectares, very detailed soil mapping in multiple depths. Um, here's an example of quick outlining of um, management zone and um, soil series and dairy farm in New Jersey on the left. Um, they correspond to the Surga soil maps. And on the right, we have a quick um, uh, outlining of or checking um, rice fields for salinity before planting. Uh, it's, it's the same farm I showed on the slide before. Uh, we just use land mapper and the phone GPS to um, uh, measure electrical conductivity in situ on those little flags across the field and give him recommendation which fields um, are ready to be planted. Uh, if we want uh, more detailed information, um, uh, 2D or 3D electrical tomography, it's also possible with the cyber instrument. Uh, which we distribute uh, here in US um, from Cyber Geo company. There are um, 32 electrodes, um, 48 electrode modification, and 64 electrodes. Um, also, we use um, the provide support and sales and installation for those uh, cyber devices with Cyber Geo in Indonesia in 2014 and 2015 years. Here's just example again uh, around um, rice field in Indonesia. Um, and, and we continue lighting research through collaboration with diff different uh, companies. Um, here's an example of a three company association. Uh, we got a um, um, uh, Parsi grant uh, for business acceleration, um, combining um, ge genomic plant genetics um, uh, instrument um, development and um, remote sensing, analytic inter interaction and precision agriculture. So the, the grant was um, a catchy name, Crop Prediction Take Flight, uh, and we were integrating again genomics and geophysics. Uh, so the genomic part is done by Computomics in Germany um, and CyberGeo do um, um, new instrument um, here on, on this grant, um, they have this GeoVisor smaller version of uh, IMMP 14. It's lighter, so the octocopter drone could lift it up, and now they're doing calibration with that. And also developing even smaller sensor specific for the drone, and possibly in integrating land mapper into the drone. Um, the whole grant is also kind of heavy in data analytic, um, machine learning. Like I was saying the whole uh, presentation today, agriculture get a lot of new cool tools, a lot of data, and the uh, genetic part is also tremendous amount of data available. But breeders still um, don't know how to utilize them all, and breeders keep 
collecting more data. Uh, and uh, now this grant is uh, three company collaboration to um, analyze and um, use genotype information data, environmental earth observation data, and improve the management to speed up developing new varieties which are more adaptable to the climate change for different crop. And uh, we thank you for their attention. Please connect with us, uh, bring, bring your ideas. We are on LinkedIn, uh, visit landvisor.com or visit our LinkedIn page. And we're happy to connect and help with different research and development projects or problems you have maybe on your land. Thank you very much.